winter is upon us and it's just about as miserable as I expected it to be. Never really been a fan of really cold weather. I can never seem to keep my hands warm enough. The temperature is actually going to dip below freezing a couple mornings this week. So I think we may be able to take our backhoe out and finally clean out a few of our ditches just because it's been way too wet since the end of fall to get any kind of field work done. Probably had four to five inches of rain. When it's this cold outside though, the ground just never dries up. Chris and Jeff are over at the main farm right now moving some corn. We've got a very early start to coring out our corn bins and we may even start emptying them depending on how the market looks. Everyone make sure you drop a like on the video, subscribe if you enjoy it. Let's get to work. We do have a little treat in the barn here though to help dig out the ditches. A little toy if you will. Christmas came early. This is a 54 inch smooth edge bucket. Perfect for digging out the bottom of the ditch. It should leave a pretty smooth finished product because it doesn't have any teeth across the bottom like our other bucket. And it's almost twice the width, so maybe I can get my job done a little bit faster. I don't trust myself enough to hook it up in the barn. I'm gonna drag it outside with the forklift and try to do it out on the rocks. Well, I got interrupted before I even started. Chris and Jeff need help with something. Nothing major, they just need help sliding the backhoe conveyor back under the pit. We took it out over the weekend because it was supposed to rain and then freeze over these next few days and we didn't want any water to get iced up in there and ruin that belt when we try to start it. I'm more than happy to help. The only problem is that every time I get out of the truck when it's this cold outside, it takes me a couple minutes to get the courage to get back out to go into the barn. I don't know, I might get cold in that 15 foot walk. The longer I delay this project, the less time I have to spend getting out of semi and hauling grain this afternoon. Will the forklift start? That is the true question. Choke a little bit. Everyone likes a good choking every now and then. It's Monday morning. I did not see that coming. Sometimes life is just full of surprises. Let's get this door open, let the cold weather in. The nice thing about hooking it up out there is that I can't crack any of this concrete, which would probably happen if I did that. I'm just gonna pretend that I don't see this truck, then maybe I won't have to haul grain. There's all sorts of hard to move things underneath it. Easy excuse for the day. It's not that I don't enjoy hauling grain, but we've got almost like 300,000 bushels to move. Jeff's already started on that a little bit, but between two semis, even though we're not going far, that's a lot of days of moving grain around. Probably the longest season of farming is grain hauling season. It's an easy job with the exception of hopping in grain bins. Just kind of dread it. Thankfully though, it's hose season. There's my main gal. We also put new batteries in it the other day, so guaranteed it starts. Effortless. Throttle her up a little bit. Time to go find the bathroom. This looks like the best one we're gonna find. Sometimes it's easier to watch the tutorial on how to do something you're not very proficient in before you even start, because you know you're going to be Googling it when you can't figure it out. How to detach hoe on Case 580 Super N. I think I figured it out. Probably not though. There's a hydraulic pin on each side that I should be able to unlock from the cab. If I get it right, this part of the bucket will come loose and then a thumb here just kind of wedges itself in there and it should fall out of place. I bet you I get it in the first try. Yep, that was my first try. This was a record pace for me. I think I've only been out here for five minutes. So I've got my little thumb on the back of the hoe, ready to hook up to a new bucket, and I'll leave this bucket here. Hopefully no one backs into it. Last time I left it here, Chris backed into it with the red truck. That's why it's got a big dent in the tailgate. Let's go see if we can pick up this 54-inch bucket. Ladies and gentlemen, we got it. That bucket is really big. Kind of got the itch to go dig with this right now. You know, you get a new toy, you gotta take it for a little run. It actually looks bigger when it's attached to the backhoe. And there's a little bit of weight on the back tire. And they let us keep the pallet. 
With the exception of maybe changing the oil before we're done with our work for the winter, this backhoe's ready to go for another 50 to 100 hours. Pumped every single Zerk on this thing full of grease the other day. Shouldn't be any squeaking here for the next few weeks. Top off the fuel tank, and hopefully we can take maximum advantage of these frozen mornings we're gonna have for the next few days. I need to get something, but everyone be quiet. The tractors are sleeping. You don't want to disturb them. I also don't want to hit one of these disc gangs and knock myself out. Somewhere in the vertical tilt tractor is something very important. There it is. Bluetooth to radio station. The single most important device in my day. Don't know if I could farm full time if I couldn't listen to music. We emptied that north bean bin two weeks ago. The middle four bins are still packed full of corn and we started coring the south 48 foot bin. We kind of had some structural issues with it that we're not entirely reassured about. So we're gonna go ahead and take some weight off of it. It's not that we don't think it'll hold. It's just showing some signs of age and maybe some weight stress. You can see right there, it looks like it's gonna pop out. It's looked like that for a few years, but when you got almost 40,000 bushels of corn in here, makes you a little bit uneasy and definitely makes you core this one first. I would say over the summer, we're gonna have to fix this. If you look at the door itself and then look at the door frame, a little bit of an angle there. When the bin's full, we try not to stand in that area. You never know when it's gonna get a little too heavy and pop out on you. I just like looking at it. The newness will wear off in about one day. The backhoe's only got 460 hours on it and it looks like it's got about 10,000. It won't take long for the bucket to look the same. Okay. Found something I'm gonna try and dig. I really just wanna see what this bucket will do. Dig a little bit of a trench to the diversion, maybe put the dirt up on the hill. There we go. Maiden voyage. Well, it digs about exactly how I imagined it. Four inch smooth edge bucket, but in fact, dig. Flat and wide. We're gonna park this and wait on some cold weather, or at least colder than it is right now. Wow, look at this hat hair. Luscious. Maybe it's Maybelline. I don't know. It's getting to that time of year where you start to have a lot of seed salesmen show up to your place. A lot of farmers who don't sell seed themselves really can empathize that these seed salesmen are all very good people trying to stop by, offer you their product. And although you'd like to give all these really nice people a ton of business, it's just hard to be competitive in pricing unless you're placing very large orders for their company. So every year around this time, they're going around trying to drum up business, stopping by. And fortunately for me, I'm not the boss here. So anytime I see someone I don't want to talk to, I just send them to dad's house. I say, oh yeah, look for the old grumpy guy that wears red clothes all the time. It's the guy you need to talk to. Just like to pass the buck. Change of plans. We're gonna try to do some digging today. Thank the Lord though, I did not want to get in a semi yet. We're headed down to try and see if we can start digging along a ditch where there's a little bit of a grass waterway or filter strip on the outside. So I think that the wet conditions aren't really gonna stop us there. If it's too messy, I will have to come back in and find something else to do. We're gonna go test it out. I've been out here playing in the dirt for a little while and I'm surprised to say that the ground's actually pretty firm considering how much rain we've had. Tomorrow when it freezes up, I might be able to float across all this without making any kind of a mess. I've done maybe 100 to 150 yards that doesn't seem like that very much of a distance to clean out a drainage ditch and also to dig trees out, but I've actually been out here for a very long time already. I've got maybe 30 to 40 yards left to go. Backhoe's obviously already covered in mud, completely caked. The bucket does work nice. The only major issue that I'm running into with the backhoe is that it's just not long enough to reach into these ditches and dig them out efficiently. By the time I back up, get my stands down, reach over, I can only reach just a handful of a half circle there. Then I gotta pick up, move over, do the same thing. You really need a Traco for a job like this. Well, you don't need it, but it'd be very nice. Our neighbors actually have a Traco parked on the same drainage ditch just a little bit down that they've been digging out. I'm kinda jealous. I should hop over there and see if they left the keys in it. I just dig the dirt out, put it in a pile, and then use the wide bucket again to smooth it out. That way in the spring, the field cultivator should be able to level that a little bit more. If you leave really big piles, you're never gonna work them down efficiently. I'm gonna get back to it, head down a little bit farther south, fix the rest of that. On the other side of the ditch, I'm just gonna pull the trees, not dig it out anymore. And then I have to basically go all the way up to where that green field of wheat is. So three quarters of a mile maybe. Got a lot of digging to do. That's what six hours of digging looks like. Sounds like a lot of time, but I haven't really covered that much ground. Now I'm gonna hop over the other side of the ditch and just pull the trees that are on that side. 
We own both sides of this field. Oh, there's a deer out yonder. If you can see through all my splatter marks where I've set down all that mud, it shot water everywhere. A couple of them hit me in the face, but that's just what happens when you're out hoe and you don't have your window up. Whew, finally got the backhoe back in the barn at home. That was a long day at work. Early tomorrow morning, it's supposed to be frozen. We're gonna take the backhoe back out and see if we can do a little bit more work without furthering the mess we've already made. Good morning. It's a nice 28 degrees. Not quite as cold as I was hoping it would get, but it should be enough to freeze the ground. Puddles are frozen. That's always a good sign. And there's frost on the ground, but it's not gonna stay long here, 28 degrees in the sun shining. It'll be thawed out within a couple hours. Oh, the back right tire looks a little low. I probably should fill that up before we leave. I'm kind of intimidated by using the air compressor when it's frozen outside. Two years ago, we had a pretty major malfunction with this thing. They did not have this pop-off or blow-off valve here, and we had ice in the lines. The water had accumulated and frozen overnight. We went to run the air compressor. Water got in this radiator and then blew a hole out the side. I was standing just a little bit out of the way. Dad was right next to it, and needless to say, I usually get my distance from it when it's running and it's cold. They did make it right somewhat. They sent us a new radiator and they sent us this valve right here to hopefully alleviate that problem from happening in the future, but that memory's burned in my mind. It probably holds about 35 pounds if I had to guess. It's always this tire. It took me five minutes just to find the valve stem. I'm out here at our well farm. I just got down here. I kind of had to change my route for the day. This ditch is way too deep for me to get down there and dig the dirt out. You can't do it without a track hoe. So at a very minimum, I'm gonna go along the side, pull out all the small trees, and hopefully get that done in the next few hours. I'm fighting against the clock at this point because it actually did not freeze as deep as I was hoping. I'm afraid that once I get down to the south and into the black dirt, that we're actually gonna start sinking in. So this may be a short-lived project. We're gonna push on though and see what kind of work we can finish up before the ground softens up. Well, it's already soft, I've got mud on my shoes. Since I don't quite have the ability to get to the bottom of the drainage ditch and scoop it out with this bucket, I ran home real quick. I'm gonna drop this bucket off and get the one with some teeth. This bucket, although it's not good for digging dirt, is great for taking out trees. Give it a few shakes to make sure it's on. Let's go take out a few more trees. I made a new friend. Hey bud. Hey, you're safer here than you are out in the woods. It is a shotgun weekend. He's just not sure about me, but he also doesn't want to leave. Hey, you don't have to leave because of me. He must be a lot of fun at parties. We ended up getting a lot more done than I thought we were going to. The sun went back behind the clouds, so the ground stayed pretty firm. I am a little disappointed that I couldn't dig out this ditch because it definitely needs it. These extremely large, deep, wide drainage ditches need a track hoe, and the backhoe is just not capable of reaching down there and efficiently cleaning it out. On the bright side though, it would have taken me a couple days to dig out this whole ditch, so I'll take the good with the bad. Switching to the smaller bucket with the teeth on it made cleaning out the trees pretty easy. I already came out here like three or four years ago now and dug out this entire ditch. It was just flush with trees. Although a lot of you probably don't agree with removing these small trees, you gotta understand they're basically little thieves. Their roots grow out into our fields, steal water and nutrients from our valuable crops. And these are four to five, maybe 10 foot trees. When you start dealing with 30 or 40 or 50 foot tall trees, their roots will go 50 to 100 feet out into a field and they can actually cause a very big yield impact on a dry year, let alone the effect they have on the plants from stealing so much sunlight. I guess we'll just take the backhoe home and take it easy the rest of the day. You didn't honestly believe that, did you? Oh no, I got suckered in to help clean out the 48 foot corn bin. They should be about done. I've skirted my way around having to help with this at all for the last few weeks, and I think my time's finally come to do a little bit of manual labor. We've got the fan running in reverse, pulling the air out of the bin. That way we don't have much of a need for masks in the bin. Keeps our lungs a little bit cleaner. Corn bins aren't as bad as bean bins though, so we'll be all right. a load is you can shut the fan off. Thankfully I have your protection. Ah, so much better. I can finally hear myself think now. I use Spotify for all my music and they just put out their 2020 year wrapped up summary for you to see how much music you've listened to. I have listened to in the last 12 months 69,000 minutes worth of music. Music is life.
and it makes almost every task much more enjoyable. Setting up for a little side project here while we wait on Jeff to get back for the next load of corn and hopefully the last load of corn in the bin. I've got my sister's little electric power washer. I think it should be enough to get this mud off the windows on the backhoe. She's a dirty one, never hurts to give them a bath. Although I do think some equipment just looks better if it's muddy. A muddy backhoe is a well used backhoe. Dad's over there greasing the vertical till. We're about to put it away. Jeff should be back soon, finish off the 48 foot grain bin. And I need to find a drop cord for this electric power washer. I definitely need to make sure that I get the cord out of the way by the time Jeff comes back through because the last thing I want to do is to be replacing the power cable on this. I think I have just enough time to give it a rinse and then we'll come back and give it a polish after. It says a whopping 2000 PSI, which actually that's a lot of PSIs. Didn't even get 10% of it washed off and dad's calling me over to help put away the vertical till. I can never get any kind of work done around here. It is going to go right there in front of the field cultivator. a few years of wear and tear has probably taken its toll on that but one thing you always need to know is that it's never good for the ground to turn a tractor especially a four-wheel drive without it in motion if it's not in motion the hydraulics are literally just ripping the tires towards each other you got to have it in gear be headed one direction or the other that way there's not a lot of force going across the ground without some kind of direction to it i think we're going to be able to shimmy the tractor around it and not have to worry about it for now we'll fix it that's about as close as it possibly could have been. Now for part two. Just need to get the rolling basket underneath the tongue of this field cultivator. All we're gonna do is put the vertical till down just a hair and then move the back end over slightly. The tongue will be out of the way up front by the door and we'll be able to pull it in another couple, probably four foot. Easy! Oh! I mean, he could have just did what I said and got the front end over more and we would have made another foot. But where she'll rest. Bring me the jack. Am I going to be able to get out? Yeah, hey, you can always straddle it. No, I meant him. Oh, there's room between him and the barn. No matter if you can't. Fixed it. List. It's gonna have to be fixed pretty fast because that's essential for our doors to shut. We want to keep all of our nice tractors safe and sound. Last load, here we go. The sweet bogger wasn't wanting to disengage and had to kind of finagle it on the inside and eventually just popped out of place, which is kind of concerning. That's why I'm standing by the off switch for the auger. This whole bin's just falling apart. At least now we don't have to worry about the door popping open. There's not gonna be any weight on it. It's like taking your socks off after a long day of work. It's weird to already be saying this in December, but it's ready for the 2021 crop year. That's what 45,000 bushels of storage capacity looks like. 48 foot grain bin. I didn't realize we hired the Amish. Push down here. Putting a lot of faith in you. I told you it wouldn't work. You can't even tell that that was ever mangled. First time this year everything's been unhooked. Back to my other project. Wash in the backhoe. I can tell you just from the 15 seconds that I ran this power washer that it's not even close to as powerful as our Landa one in there that's gas powered. It definitely has a little bit more juice behind it than this little electric one, but I would imagine that this is a lower grade one, more of a residential type product. I'm just trying to get the mud off. Looks better already. Squeaky clean. Well, 
Not really, actually. But the rims are clean. That's really the only thing I wanted to clean off. The backhoe lives a life of service. Not really luxury. This thing's seen some stuff. That appeared recently. Don't know how that got there. A little hole in the grill. Per hour use, this thing just gets abused. Goodbye, backhoe. I'm sure we're going to be seeing you again soon. I got this fancy power washer and a dirty truck. So I'm probably going to clean that too. Oh boy, sometimes I forget how pretty this truck is. It spends so much time out here on the farm covered in dirt. And I'm not really that big of a fan of cleaning it every week just because I don't want to take the time to. But when it's shined up, it does look good. And I bet that'll last about one or two miles and it'll be dirty again. Well, everyone, that's going to be it for me. I'm going to take this pressure washer back to my sister. I've had it for way too long. Thank you guys for tuning in. I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe if you want to see more, and comment if you have any questions. I'll get back to you when I have time. You know I love to talk about farming. If you're not already following me on Instagram, head on over there. My username's at a trippy farmer. Same thing as the YouTube. Follow me on that account. You'll see a lot of things that you don't see on the videos, off-season stuff, and communicating with other farmers. Thanks again. Have a great night. Peace. Come on.